That we bring on an esteemed guest, a friend, two-time Olympian, a Hall of Famer, Birmingham, Michigan's hey. pride, Cranbrook hey. High School, Alexi Lawless, Hello, Fox Sports. We're punching it out. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, America. Now, you are very dressed up today. You're getting ready for some coverage. Ah, uh, yes, I am. God, I'm, I, I got put on the uh, suit. I'm wearing pants today, so that's uh, that's something that's uh, good. And well, because of your show, <laughs> because of the bottom half that okay. is being shown to America. I always think it's interesting when you, because you're a straight shooter with none of the bull, mm -hmm. uh, you get a lot of pushback on uh, the Bird app, which I love. Oh, you're, bring it, you're, bring it. I know you're. I'm a glutton for punishment over there. You're a defiant you know. truth teller. Well, you know. Okay. Screw them, you know. I'm gonna, I will, I will, I will hunt you down like a dog. <laughs> all right, to your, to your parents' basement. Okay, four big questions. <laughs> Lionel Messi had a marvelous goal today. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the biggest moment in terms of uh, personnel in the history of the MLS. Any pushback from anybody on it? It seems like a win, 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 win. I, I don't know how, if you call yourself a soccer fan or even a casual soccer fan that you can paint this in anything but a positive for Major League Soccer, for Inter-Miami, uh, the team that he is going to, and I guess for American soccer in general. This is a coup, all right? He could have gone to Saudi Arabia for yes. ridiculous amounts of money. Was. I know. Well, who's not going to Saudi Arabia? Who's not taking the Saudi Arabia money right now? <laughs> Evidently me Messi. So this is a wonderful thing for MLS. They can use it. I think it will look, be looked at as a, uh, a seminal moment. You're looking at Arguably the greatest of all time coming here uh, and, you know, everything that he brings and whether it's the social media or whether it's just the, the, the attention and the credibility. But for the first time ever, we are going to see Messi play in a league that is built on manufactured parity, where he is not playing with the best players surrounding him, where he's not playing for not only the best team. I mean, Inter Miami right now is not a good team right. at all. Yeah. And so he might look very different in the context of the unique aspects that come with Major League Soccer, both on and off the field, traveling seven hours to Vancouver, playing on different types of surfaces, different types of weather. So we're going to see him out of that cocoon that he has lived in and been incredible in for a long time. Uh, for the record, what I mean, obviously, he's a great goal scorer. Mm -hmm. The first time you saw him, was it the twitchiness? Uh, wh what was the first thing that jumped out to you? It was, I mean, first off, if you were to not know anything about soccer and see him walking down the street, there's no way that you would look at him and say, well, there goes arguably the greatest soccer player ever and one of the most famous and greatest athletes ever to go onto a sporting field. That's one thing. Uh, the, the low center of gravity for a, or a tall guy like myself would be incredibly difficult. You know, the, the Barry Sanders, the Billy Sim, these types yeah. of players that are able to shift their weight very, very quickly yes. and get other players to have to bite uh, and therefore shift their weight. And it's just, you cannot do it quick enough. He sees things, he gets out of situations where there's two and three players around him. He makes other players better. He's much more rugged than people give him credit for because look, he's lived for over a decade where people trying to decapitate him basically on right. the field. Yeah. And yet he just rides off of challenges is very durable. And like I said, shifts that weight and that low center of gravity that just screws a lot of players. up. Has a little Gretzky quality tends yep. to see things about a pass ahead. Yep. And he is in places that he needs to be. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask you about the U.S. men in the Gold Cup. So mm -hmm. that starts next Saturday. A, explain, because I, I do this every sure. time. Fundamentally, explain to a soccer fan what the Gold Cup is, why it's important, and your view of how we'll do. Okay, so Gold Cup is our region. Our region is called CONCACAF. It yeah. has 41 teams. It's basically North America and the Caribbean. So you have the World Cup that, that, that decides the champion of the entire world, and CONCACAF teams, including the U.S., are involved in that. And then you have your regional champions, yes. which is what Gold Cup is, and it decides the champion of our region. It goes back and forth between us and Mexico. We are the big dogs in CONCACAF. Yeah, we're... It does feel like over the last maybe 24 months of stretching it, they had about a four-year run yep. where I felt they had better players. I feel like we've seized that rivalry. Oh, we own them. We own them. It makes me so happy. I think the U.S.-Mexico rivalry is the greatest rivalry in international soccer. Go ahead. Come at me. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. But our, obviously our proximity, our incredible history, all of the connections that we have. And to your point, now that that pendulum has swung towards the U.S., because it was a long time where Mexico owned us in terms of soccer. And right now that is not the case. You know, Greg Berhalter and his cycle uh, of the U.S. national team, Win after win after win and great performance right now. So 
you know, they play again tonight in a different type of tournament, and then the Gold Cup, if everything goes as planned and the soccer gods smile upon us, we have a U.S.-Mexico final, and yet again we beat Mexico. Um, it's a very young team. I said during last World Cup, I felt our next great World Cup was when these 22-year-olds are 26. Mm -hmm. So you think we should be favored in this Gold Cup? Yeah, we should. We, uh, in our region, we are, like I said, the big dogs. We absolutely should be favored, and that type of pressure comes. Oh, right. It will be some of the young players, some of the usual suspects that you know, but it's all with an effort to 2026 and making sure that when 2026 happens, that we make the most of it on and off the field. I mean, this talk about a seminal moment. This is going to be huge. The landscape has fundamentally changed. I'm sitting here in this chair with both of you good-looking gentlemen here yeah. and this incredible opportunity to talk to you because of the summer of 1994. The World Cup changed my life forever. It changed soccer forever. And in 2026, when it comes back to the United States, Canada, and Mexico, it's coming back to a very, very different type of landscape. And the U.S. team needs to put in a good performance and go there, not just to be there, but go there to win. Will there be a player? Um, we know the world's best players. We know our top players. Mm -hmm. Is there an emerging, because as, as you have your Pulisic, McKinney, Dest, we, we know our core. Yeah. Is there another player that I should just keep my eye on? Over the next few years, a goal scorer is, you know, my, my kingdom for a goal scorer. And we have not found that true striker, number nine, whatever you want to call it. That person that consistently puts the fear of God in the opposition, that has to game plan for the opposition, and scores goals. The interesting thing going into the next three years is uh, the dual national situation. For example, yes. Flo Balogun, yes. okay? This is a player who grew up in the Arsenal system and had the opportunity to play for England or the U.S. We win, again against England, and uh, he is going to play for us. And so if he develops that would be really interesting because that is a that is a position of need going for right now it has been forever it has for it, 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 it it has and and it showed up in the last world cup in qatar having somebody again and, and we're not alone in the world trying to find somebody to do the hardest thing that happens. There's about six of those yeah, guys, maybe it eight. It, it's difficult to do. <laughs> so uh, someone like him I think will be interesting. And some players that maybe we haven't heard of yet that over the next three re years will come to, the, the, come to the fore and the opportunity exists in, ta in that uh, platform in 26. Okay, July 20th, the Women's World Cup. Oh, yeah. So for 20 years, we were the dominant team. Japan was tough. Uh, we, we have some uh, rivals now that feel like they've bridged the gap. We also had an older team and and there's a pivot now to get younger for us. I think that's my world sure. view on this. We're, we're, it's hard. It's like the Warriors. You're dominant. You've got young guys, young, young, young ladies, young people, and you, you try to bridge the gap. And now... How do you feel going in? Well, look, you know, we're going, to be, we're going to be down there blowing it out with Fox down there. I will be down there spending six weeks down in front of the Opera House there in our set uh, in Australia. It's in Australia and New Zealand. Yes. As you mentioned, U.S. team still number one, two World Cups in a row, going for three in a row, a three-peat, which has never been done, men's or women's. So wow. history is in the offing this summer as you tune in and watch the, uh, the U.S. women. But... The rest of the world is gunning for us. As you mentioned, we have a, we have a head start. Let's be honest. That's Decades right. head start. That's we right. made it from a law perspective. We did the things that give opportunities and more opportunities and quality uh, for, for women's sports in general. Yeah, we and encouraged obviously, women's absolutely. sports Absolutely. And, and the rest of the world and many countries and cultures didn't. But with limited resources, they can catch up very, very quickly. And the rest of the world is catching up. You look at a team like England, European champions, they would love nothing more, not only to win the World Cup, but to do it at the expense of the U.S. I, I don't... I want the U.S. to win, and, and I hope that they win. But if they lose, I just don't want them to lose to England. Because you think the English are insufferable now when it comes to their <laughs> soccer? Good God, if the women's national team also wins the World Cup, I'm never going to hear the end of it. Who is the best? You know, and again, the World Cup has passed. Mm -hmm. These things are cyclical. We, you know, there's, there's, I think it's Italy now as was down, didn't make the World Cup. The last two World Cups, Italy has not uh, made the World Cup. So, so it, things e happen. Even for great nations, you'll, you'll have powerful France teams. It ebbs and flows. Um, if, if I said to you right now, our talent, our core, mm -hmm. uh, the FIFA world rankings, eh, nebulous, but I think they're reasonable. If I said to you, can we become by the next world cup, a top 12 country? Yeah, I think, I think we're, I think we can do that right now. You look at a team like Croatia, you know, with a couple million people, and yet they have done incredible things with, with less, to be quite honest with you. The U.S. team should go into 2026 uh, with the belief that they can win the World Cup. Now, do things have to go right? Absolutely. But right. I do think we have the most, I'll sound like such a newbie, I think our skill, our foot skill level, ball on foot, uh, clever, I think, 
we don't look like we looked 20 years no, ago. No, we've progressed. I think we are. From the Neanderthal days of my uh, generation, no, yes, we have progressed. No, but I think what we had in your generation was athletes who played yep. soccer at a high level. Now we have kids whose dads played soccer. Yep. Right? And I think our skill level, ball on foot, foot on ball and maneuvering through people. I mean, that's, to me, Pulisic, not a great goal score, but an ability to make people miss midfield attack that that's rare for us. I feel like we've got several players now that bring that. Yeah, to the we've, table. we've defended. We've had great goalkeepers that's in the a, past. Been good with the, the physical part of yeah. the game, I think, is something that we mastered a long time ago. Some of the nuances of the game, they come with time. They come with, let's be honest, it, although it's a, you know, something that can be criticized, the specialization from a much younger age, that's right. players being given great opportunities and resources and better coaching and better fields and more time with the ball. That has to have an effect, and the pathways, whether it's Major League Soccer or any, any place else. I mean, I had, to, I had to be on a field in a World Cup to get the opportunity to go to Europe to play, okay? We're talking about players right now in the U.S. that some of them don't even step on the field yet from a Major League Soccer perspective, and they're already being scouted and given opportunities and pathways. I don't say that with any sense of, uh, of anger. Yeah. Hell no, this is awesome. This, may, this warms the cockles of my redheaded heart to see all of these opportunities. And we all stood on shoulders, and we all want to push that boulder forward. And it is a labor of love, but it is still a labor. But it's a little bit diff, uh, more, uh, uh, easier each and every year as these things happen. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.